We have three amazing agents. What makes you excited? I like the action. How much do you want to make? Write that on a check. I want this info. That stuff excites me. We're going to change lives out there. Ready? Let's talk about hiring, dehiring, finding talent. Would you rather have few people that they are above average, you don't pay them too much, you just, there's a enough budget, but you're not overpaying them, or you have less people, very talented, high, high work ethic, and you pay them so much? Both. A Which one? Both. Can you have you both? Mix them like up? You, need, you, need, you need one or two of those and one or two of those. Mix, it, so mix okay. it up. That's, that's my thought. You? I think I'd rather have a very small all-star unit of about four to five people. Even though you have to pay a lot. I, it, it, it's, it's, price, it's, it's invaluable, for sure, because otherwise you have turnover, um, and the turnover is intangibly expensive to your life and business. Mm -hmm. you know, we, we hang out with Gary a lot, and Gary says, um, you're basically five hires away from living whatever life you want. So for sure, all day long, I would rather pay, roll out the carpet and open up the checkbook to have five talented human beings for peace of mind and know that the machine is moving forward. Mm -hmm. Don't you think though there's <clears throat> some tasks you don't want to pay that person who's super talented to like stand at the copy machine or to run out and get your, your put your sign up, put your lockbox on, get your keys, run, you know, that kind of stuff. So the premise of having like a, a, a group of five all-stars is that you assign a, a, a task or you assign a, a leg of the company to a talented person and it's their job to um, get it done and hire the people within that to make it happen so that you don't have to worry about it, right? Then so it's a mix that? at the end of the day. It's a, it's a, it's, it's, I guess I only want to talk to five people and then they could talk to 100. I agree with that, by the way. I don't want to talk to them all. Mm -hmm. I don't want to manage them all. I want my one or two go-to people, but I'm still the one. I think you both are saying, that now it's clear, you're both saying the same thing. It's just, uh, ultimately, you do want talented people in your team. Mm -hmm. Of course. Is it better to be a lonely lion or be a popular sheep? Lonely lion. I'm a loner. I don't like people, so. <laughs> people don't like me. <laughs> so. So, I think okay. it's that's not true. The consensus. Right. No, obviously, if you didn't, people didn't like you, you guys wouldn't have those transactions. But the, it is the truth that if you are high-level producing person, not necessarily you're popular all the time because you have to say no's. You have to stand up to a seller who took the you took the listing, you made the effort, and doesn't want to respond to you, or transaction that you work so hard, you close the transaction, the client says, I'm not paying you. Was <laughs> <laughs> it sensitive time. <laughs> um, but you know, it happens that you just can't be popular and just, okay, fine, you know, I'm just gonna be the good person right now, right? Yeah. Okay, so on that, on that note, um, do you find yourself saying no often? You guys get calls on recruiting you to other companies you get calls selling your product as well as getting clients that you go to appointments and you're like, you are just unrealistic. I very consciously say no to things. In fact, I try to say no to more things because the more you say yes to, again, there's only so many hours in the day. So I say yes to somebody who wants to sell their house. I say yes to certain things. And then the other things, I try to avoid or my staff returns the call. There's in fact one thing I've learned just about how I run my business that if I want something from somebody, I don't go to the person, I go to the people who work for them because that's mm -hmm. how you get to me. You go through, mm -hmm. you can convince somebody in my office, Stephanie, you need to talk to this person, I'll listen to that. Exactly. So that's. I try to stay away from those kind of calls and conversations because I find myself having a little bit of like a soft spot for people that are selling me on something, believe this or not. Like when people sell me something, me I'm too, like, oh, I'm a sucker. can I give you a donation of some sort? It's kind of like, come to this fundraiser, can, can I, I, I cannot. I'm, mm -hmm. I, 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 and I'm not gonna say I can, I, I choose not to, mm -hmm. but I'd like to actually help you because you had the courage to, you know, to, to go through all those channels to get to me. So to. yeah, I do have a soft spot to people that ask me for stuff. and. So I try to keep myself as barricaded away from that. That's funny because whenever we get telemarketer calls, if my husband is being short or snippy with them, I'm like, be nice to that person. Yeah. That used to be me. Yeah. <laughs> you, yeah. Don't do that. They're working, they're working hard. That's a horrible position to be in to ask for business. I, yeah. That's what we do. So Especially I'm a soft that, spot for yeah, that too. For sure. 
So I used to be like Eric and actually feel bad because I come from a phone business. Now, if I know 100% that I'm not interested in it, I'm gonna stop the person and say, listen, yeah. you're very good at what you're doing. I promise you, you're wasting your time on this call right now. I'm not interested by any means. If the person continues, I'm gonna say it one more time and then I'll hang up with him. And it's better that way because if I'm gonna waste them, what I used to do, I'm gonna say, call me back tomorrow because I was softy, right? I would be, feel bad for them. I'm like, oh, dude, it sounds really good. You know, I'm interested because I'm scared to tell them no. Mm -hmm. Call me back in the week. The guy will catch me in the middle of this day. Hey, 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 it's Charles. Remember you spoke to me last week about this? You, you were very interested. Charles, yes, um, call me back next week. And he would continue for like months, right? And this poor guy would just continue to feel like he has something coming. Mm -hmm. But in the end, it was nothing. Mm -hmm. So I realized that I'm hurting people by being nice to them. So I stopped, started, I listened to what the pitch is. If there's zero interest, mm -hmm. I cut it off right away. So basically what you're saying, as you got older, not as an age-wise, just yes. an experienced agent, you learn to say no, firm no's. Firm more, no's. More but than still before. Nice. Still so nice. Still nicely. You do, your average sale prices are pretty high. Do you find yourself firing sellers? Have you ever? Um, I fired a few this past year and it's not firing it's just mm -hmm. not being on the same page and mm -hmm. not wanting to continue to spend the money in marketing and, and the time. effort and the time when something just doesn't make sense you know um, we have a seller now so Dennis I'm broke I'm hungry I want to sell my house I want to list it at this price and I said Mr. Seller but you are completely crazy he said, Dennis, listen to my keywords. I'm broke, I wanna sell my house, but I want this price. If this price doesn't work, we will adjust it. I want you to believe that my home is worth that, and we will discuss. That seller, I understand, and I will work my ass off to make that magical mm -hmm. price. But if somebody says, Dennis, I want this price, but if I don't get it, I'm not interested in selling, it just doesn't work for me, and if I know that it's not possible at all, I'll be honest and say I'm not the right person mm -hmm. for this job. But don't you find that sometimes the person who tells you, I'm broke, I'm hungry, I've got to sell yeah. and I want to overprice it and we'll talk and then you're in it and they're like, you know, uh -uh, I'm not going to. Or the person who says, I don't need to sell if I don't get this price, mm -hmm. I'm not leaving. Yeah. And then it's not working, then boom, they drop well, it right down. Mm -hmm. So I don't think people, at one, I don't think a lot of people really know what, what they, they want, want to yeah. do. And number two, it's not until it's unfolding yeah. before them and circumstances change and they become more comfortable yeah. with, okay, I'm not gonna get that price. this price. I have, I'm gonna have to settle for this and then they ease into it. Yeah. I agree. The only thing that we have is our stomachs and <laughs> right to make that decision yeah. for us because we can't take every single thing that comes to yeah. our table because we can't eat that much. Because we won't be able to service that business that way. Do so, you fire people? That sounds really harsh, firing people. Um, but when I meet a client for the first time, one of the first things we discuss is that if at the end of the presentation, if I'm not the guy for them, I'm not gonna, I, I will let them know respectfully. And usually the, the, the base of that um, uh, reasoning will be price. And so we establish it up front. And um, if up front, you know, it's not where it needs to be, plus or minus, the bandwidth is not as big for me to be able to, to work with someone and say, okay, well, Sure, you're you're not where you want to be. Let's 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 put it out there and see what happens. And then a few months later, we can drop it and then see that 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 approach doesn't really work too too well for me um, because it's maybe we're not as much in luxury. Most of our stuff is a little more clear mm -hmm. about where it should be. And if I'm not the guy, that's okay. Mm -hmm. And sometimes three months later, six months later, they call me because that's that's the guy I am. I'm the guy who has the good fortune of working with lots of folks that had a home for sale before, couldn't sell it, yet they want to sell, but they need someone who's honest and forthcoming and willing to say I'm not your guy because that it takes a little while for someone to say I, I, I'm not your guy that's okay shake the hand and walk out excuse yourself you know gracefully we just did that in my team yesterday last week um, I went to a referral through one of our friends and he said that I'm going to list this with three agents not exclusive and I want to know what you're gonna do I said, well, you don't have to worry about me. You only have to focus on two. And I'll tell you what they should do and you should ask them to do it. So I list everything and I give it to him. I, and he, I said, 
the truth is, if I sell this house or I don't sell this house, it won't really have an impact on my life. Yeah. But if I don't sell this, it will have an impact on your life. Yeah. Sure. So here are the 400 things any agent should do to list your home. Yeah. So he went to back to those two and he emailed me last night. He said, if I go with you, what would you charge? Yeah. I said, what about we talk about your price first? Yeah. And it was interesting, the takeaway, when you say I don't want it, because I was thinking, if so I do five transactions, each one one million, and I charge 2.5% commission on mine, and I don't have to spend on variety ads and all that other crap, yeah. I'll make a lot more money. Why yes. the hell I wanna, I don't even know and how the to. the time factor, the torture, because. 9,000 square feet, how many candles do I have to turn on to <laughs> show that property? And then it also becomes about you. Exactly. Why, why aren't you selling my house? And like, I told you it was overpriced, but then exactly. it becomes, then they attack you and that's. Yeah, and I think, um, as I believe the market is going to shift, it's important to be ahead of the market, not to price it to the future market, which definitely won't support it.